Well, AMD's in big trouble this time, boys. Let's talk about it. So reviews for AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs just went live and while they do offer an incredible performance increase over Ryzen 5000, the CPU and platform cost is looking to be insanely expensive. Plus something just happened that in my opinion pretty much makes the entire Ryzen 7000 lineup irrelevant. Now the good news is AMD's next generation GPUs are looking to bring incredible performance increases as well and if the price is right could put some serious pressure on Nvidia but first let's talk about those Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Now, in order to figure out why exactly I'm saying AMD's in such big trouble, first we have to go ahead and take a look at the performances in for, and then we'll talk about the pricing. And speaking of performance, first let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks that were posted over on TechSpot, which is by the way the same guys who do the Hardware and Box channel. And taking a look at the 7950X, we can see here actually it does have some really good performance coming in with basically identical performance to the i9-12900K using DDR5-6400, which is actually some really good RAM. Now next taking a look at the Tech Power power up results we can see here that actually here the 12900K does indeed have about a 4% lead over the 7950X at least when it's at its stock performance. And then finally taking a look at Paul's hardware we can see here that in his results overall the 7950X actually was faster by about 6% when compared to the 12900K and actually over 12% faster versus the 5950X and in fact that compute performance is actually way faster than the 12900K and the 5950X as well. So overall performance of the 7950X, like I mentioned earlier, is looking pretty good, but I am going to say, guys, that it is a little bit underwhelming. I was expecting the 7950X to pretty much always be beating the 12900K, and as you just saw, it looks like that's not necessarily always going to be the case. And overall, guys, I'd say that basically the 7950X is around on par with the 12900K, and if we're going to be a little bit generous, we could say that maybe on average, it's around 5% faster than the 12900K, and even if that's going to be the case, Honestly, I don't think it's fast enough for how long we had to wait and just how expensive the platform is going to be. And speaking of the cost, yeah, these CPUs are going to be very, very expensive. Specifically, first taking a look at the 7950X, this thing's going to be $700, US which is going to be a pretty high price to pay for this type of CPU. Then you have the 7900X coming in at $550, the 7700X coming in at $400, and the 7600X coming in at $300. And honestly, guys, I do truly believe that the 7950X should should have been 600 to 650, the 7900X should have been 500, the 7700X should have been 350, and the 7600X should have been $250. I think if that was the case, this whole lineup would look a lot, lot better. And also, there's some other costs associated with these CPUs that aren't being mentioned by everyone. Specifically, we have the heat is going way up, and so is the power. According to AMD, apparently 95C at stock is going to be pretty typical for these CPUs and is not something you should be worried about. But I do have to say that 95C is very, very hot for a CPU and you're probably going to want a pretty good cooler if you're going to want to get the maximum performance out of these CPUs. On top of that, we also have to consider that these are not AM4 compatible, meaning that yes, you are going to have to buy a whole new motherboard and those motherboards are looking really, really expensive. It's sounding like basically the cheapest ones available are going to be around $300 at least on launch and a lot of them are going to be a lot more expensive than that. We're talking four, five, six, seven hundred dollars $700, even some boards over $1,000, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, it does have one saving grace and I'd say that's the support support that this platform is supposed to have because according to AMD it is going to be supported through 2025 plus now what exactly does that mean we don't necessarily know and we just have to hope that they keep to their word but if they do keep to their word you should hopefully be getting at least three generations out of these motherboards if not four which is probably going to be a little bit more likely that yes you probably will get four generations out of an x670 motherboard and if that's the case well then you could look at it as somewhat of an investment but you also do have to invest into ddr5 as well and honestly guys I think the price is where this starts to fall apart a little bit and I want to circle back to what I mentioned earlier because yeah something just happened that I honestly think kind of makes Ryzen 7000 at least at its current price point a little bit irrelevant and that's that Intel just revealed their 13th generation chips and honestly guys the pricing on these CPUs is a lot better than I was originally expecting now the motherboard costs themselves are probably also going to be expensive at launch so you do have to keep that in mind however stuff like DDR5 is not going to be a requirement with the 13th generation 
generation chip. So if you really wanted to go ahead and buy a cheap $80 kit of DDR4 16 gigabytes, you could go ahead and do so with something like a 13600 KF and probably save a lot of money versus an AM5 platform. And with the performance of these chips as Intel stating that apparently they're expecting 15% single threaded gains over 12th gen and 41% in the multi-core performance, I think the performance and pricing of these CPUs is gonna look really, really good, especially when we compare it to AMD's overall platform costs. And speaking of costs, now let's go ahead and take a look at the CPUs because honestly, yeah, I was a little bit surprised because I was expecting these CPUs to actually go up in price and actually it looks like that's not gonna be the case. It looks like basically things are gonna be remaining relatively the same, which is great news for gamers as increasing prices is something that nobody wants to see. But first, let's take a look at the 13900K. As you can see here, apparently this thing's gonna have a price of $589. Now, I do wanna let you guys know that when these things go up for sale, they're probably gonna be a little bit more expensive than that. Specifically, taking a look at Newegg, I did see the 13900K was listed for pre-order at $660. So there is a chance that all these prices are gonna be maybe a little bit optimistic and the pricing is gonna end up being a little bit higher when you go to actually buy it. But even if that's gonna be the case, I think you're gonna see here in just a minute that even if they're a little bit higher, yeah, it's still gonna be a better deal than what AMD's currently offering. So I think the AMD is gonna have to quickly move to adjust their prices. And again, if we go ahead and we compare that $589 on the 13900K, which has 32 threads to the 7950X, which also has 32 threads, yeah, you're talking about saving $110 and likely getting very similar multi-core performance and probably around 10% higher performance when it comes to gaming. Similarly, if we take a look at the 13700K, this thing's supposed to cost $400. $410, which by the way, if you go for the KF models, everything's going to be a little bit cheaper. But yeah, $410. If you compare that to the 7900X at $550, well, now we're talking about saving $140. And once again, you're probably going to get pretty similar multi core performance out of this chip. And again, probably around 10% higher gaming performance. Then if we take a look at the 13600K, here's where things get really bad because if this thing is indeed available for around $320, well, if we compare that to the $400 7700X, once again, you're probably gonna get similar, if not better multi-core performance out of the 13600K, and you're gonna do so for $80 less. And then if we take a look at the 7600X versus like the 13600KF, because there really isn't anything like the 13400 available, well, then now we're talking about $294 versus $290. $99, and at this point, you're basically for the same price getting way more multi-core performance out of the 13600K, or at least that's what I would expect, because even though they are using some of these E-cores, the E-cores are supposedly gonna be greatly improved. And on top of that, I've just noticed that with 12th gen, it seems like versus at least the Ryzen 5000 series, it definitely seemed like the 12th generation chips had much stronger IPC and overall per core performance, meaning that even though if they were using E-cores, it seemed like the multi-core performance was a little bit higher than what you were gonna actually expect out of the 12th generation, and I expect that to be the case as well with the 13th generation. So yeah, you could be talking about the 13600KF giving you way more multi-core performance and a little bit more gaming performance for around the same price. So overall, guys, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It looks like the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs themselves, as well as the whole entire platform cost, are just way too expensive at the moment, and they're definitely going to have to reduce in price because as soon as these 13th generation CPUs become available, if they're available anywhere near their actual MSRP, well then yeah, that's definitely going to be bad news for AMD, and they are going to have have to reduce their prices because it's gonna make Ryzen 7000 look a little bit silly. So hopefully they do go ahead and reduce their prices. And honestly, right now, if I was gonna tell you what to buy, if you're sitting there on AM4, I'd say probably buy something like a 5800X3D and stay on AM4. Or if you wanna build a new system, yeah, you might be better off going ahead and moving to something like a 13600K versus moving on to AM5. And the only people who I would suggest to move on to AM5 would be people who are, you know, they're very particular about not wanting to to change their motherboards. They want to buy a motherboard and use it for three or four generations. If that's you, hey, the investment could end up paying off over time. But again, this is just a promise and not everybody keeps their promises. And I never recommend buying a product based on a promise. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Ryzen 7000 is still worth buying? Or do you think that 13th gen is going to crush it? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.